Hello, this is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 61, Numbers, chapters 17 through 19. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. Well, we're in numbers still. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. I would ask you if there's anything exciting going to happen today, but we're just going to do it. Okay. Chapter 17. God said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to get twelve rods, one from each tribe, and write the name of a man from each tribe on it. What what are rods? Well, I'm thinking they're just sticks. Wooden rods, wooden sticks. Okay. And they're going to write the name of, of a man on it, not a woman. I, <laughs> I expected that. Uh-huh. Write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi. Lay the rods in the tabernacle in front of the testimony. I'll meet you there. I'll choose one of the rods and make it blossom. That will make the murmurers stop murmuring against you. Is the murmuring he's talking about the complaining last time? That's what he's complaining about. They've been complaining for a while now, really almost from the beginning, (laughs) (laughs) about, you know, not having food or water. Sometimes you had people that were complaining, how come you guys are thinking you're so important? Uh Uh-huh. You get to talk to God. Yeah, yeah. So they had to get rid of some people. (laughs) <laughs> God wanted to kill everyone, remember that? And he only killed some. Yeah, so this is going to take care of that. I think that's God's plan. Uh, the the rods. The rods, yeah. Get the 12 rods, put them in the tent. And uh, we'll Leave do Leave the rest some. to me. Leave the rest to me. I would be skeptical about that. <laughs> <laughs> and Aaron's name is going on one rod. Right, the rod of Levi. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, he's kind of one of God's special guys. <laughs> yeah, and he is from the tribe of... Of Levi. Uh So the 12 tribes are going to write a guy's name on each rod. Moses delivered God's message to the Israelites, and each of the 12 princes gave Moses a rod from their tribe. Moses put the rods in front of God in the tabernacle. I imagine God standing there with a bunch of sticks on the floor. Yeah. One of them has the name of Aaron Uh on it. That's right. (laughs) His special guy. Uh Uh-huh. Aaron's rod budded, bloomed, and yielded almonds. Uh, these are just pieces of stick, right? Yeah, it's pretty impressive, huh? Yes, it is. I guess that must have happened just like overnight or maybe just instantaneously. Mm-hmm. So, so this all happened. But it all happened, yeah. So we think some magic was involved here. I'm, I'm thinking, yeah. Okay. God said to Moses, put, Aaron, put Aaron's rod in front of the testimony as a sign to the rebels. That will stop them from murmuring against me and will stop me from killing them. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird that God is saying that, isn't it? It is. I need something to stop me from killing my yeah, people. But he clearly does because he's had to been talked out of it a couple times already, a few times, I think. Yeah, he should recognize that he has a problem with he, this. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> so Moses did as God commanded. The Israelites said to Moses, Behold, we die. We all die. What does that mean? (laughs) Well, I don't really know because it's a strange reaction. Here we have God going to all this trouble, showing that Aaron's the boss. Mm -hmm. You would think they'd say, okay, we get it. Nice flower. Nice flower. Nice fruit. And it's Aaron's rod. Uh So God must have made that flower. So Aaron must be the boss. Uh We're okay with that. Everything's good. But no, they say, okay, we're just gonna we're gonna all die. Uh huh, because we've we've doubted Aaron. Oh maybe that's it. Maybe they're maybe they're feeling like now because we've been murmuring, we've been complaining, and then now God's shown us who's Stop that. boss. And we've been complaining about this boss. Uh huh. He's gonna kill us all. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so they go on to say, Whoever gets near God's tabernacle will die. Shall we all be consumed with dying? Anyway, you probably notice something that's going on here in the next, next. Yes, I see chapter 17, and then I see chapter 19. Yeah. Did you forget chapter 18? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. No, I left it out entirely. 
because the things in it we've already heard about before, and oh. I just didn't bother with it. So there's instructions for priests that we got, you know, we've had previously. Yes. Know, episode 53. And then there is uh, something about how to redeem your firstborn sons that we had back in episode 30. Yeah, we've done that. And then there was something about tithes, which we've had back in episode 3 with Abraham giving 10% of his the spoils to Melchizedek. Mm. So you went through all that work so that we didn't have to listen to another chapter? Yeah, so we're going to just skip all that. Well, that's great. And go on to chapter 19, which is really fun. Okay. You want to start with that? Okay. Verse 1. God said to Moses and Aaron, Bring an unblemished, spotless red heifer. Uh, is there such thing as a red heifer? Well, I think that it's just sort of a brownish red. Cow. So not like bright red. We'll see later that it's, it's a really special red a heifer. And rabbis have been thinking about this and talking about this ever since. Hmm. Okay, so bring an unblemished spotless red heifer. Mm -hmm. Kill it and sprinkle its blood seven times in front of the tabernacle. Burn the heifer with its skin, flesh, blood, and dung. That's a little different because in the past he said take the dung somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, that it? is different. These are really special cows. Yeah. And then you gather its ashes and put them in a clean place. These ashes will be used to make a water of separation, a purification for sin. Hmm. Like dirty water. Really dirty water because it's got the uh, ashes of dung, which would seem like, yeah, that just doesn't yeah. seem right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So this is a statute forever, that making this ash water. Right. Yeah, and, and then we'll see uh, in the next section why it's so important. Almost like holy water, maybe. Yeah, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every open container is unclean. That's um, a little bizarre. It is, but that's what it says. So you have to have it covered. Every container I, has to I be covered. I guess so. I don't know why that's even in here, but it's there, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Whoever touches a dead body, a bone of a man... Or a grave is unclean for seven days. Yeah? Yeah. To get clean, an unclean person must take the ashes of the burnt heifer and mix it with running water in a vessel. Then a clean person will take hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it on the tent, the vessels, and persons that were in the tent, and upon the person that touched the bone, dead body, or grave. The clean person shall sprinkle it on the unclean person on the third day and on the seventh day. On the seventh day, the unclean person must wash his clothes, bathe in water, and be clean in the evening. Well, that's a shocker. <laughs> yeah, and this is a perpetual statue. All right, so this um, special little yeah, ceremony. And, that, and that's it. You know, you'd think, you know, you were saying, well, why is this such a big deal? Uh -huh. We've had this before, and we have. The reason it's such a big deal is because the rabbis have made it such a big deal. Um, rabbis back in the day or rabbis, rabbis now? Rabbis ever since. Oh. Maimonides, who was a very important 11th and 12th century rabbi, mm -hmm. uh, said that there were only nine of these red heifers from all the time, from Moses and Aaron's time, all the way up until the destruction of the second temple in 70 CE. So... Nine red heifers. Nine red heifers over that period of time, which was, well, more than a thousand years. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And they must have got the ashes and then they just used a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they kept those ashes. So they only had to do it nine times. The problem was when the temple was destroyed, and up until then, they could use those ashes for purification purposes. Mm -hmm. So they could so they get clean whenever they got around a dead body or an open container or whatever the problem Yeah, so was. the priests could get clean. The priests could, yeah. So they could go on and do their sacrifices and all their priestly things. Yes. But after the destruction of the temple, they lost track of the ashes of the red heifer. Oh. So they had no more temple. They had no more ashes. So they couldn't get clean. And they couldn't build the temple until they had those ashes. Oh. Now, Maimonides said that when the 10th 
red heifer is found and sacrificed, yeah. then a new temple would be built and the Messiah would come. You know, we have talked about this before, about the temple being destroyed and the things that couldn't happen because there's no more temple. Right. So much of the Old Testament laws can't, that's the excuse for not following. And I think it is just an excuse because I think they could rebuild the temple and they could be sacrificing animals. I'm speaking here of the Jews. Yes. If they wanted to. But they don't want to. No one wants to sacrifice animals. In the I middle of New York that. City? Some do. Okay. There are a few. There is a minority of Orthodox Jews that would still like to be sacrificed. So they claim. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this happens periodically. But last fall, there were five, I think, red heifers found in, in Texas. That Where met, else? <laughs> <laughs> that met just the requirements that are needed for this red heifer. And see, the red heifer, the rabbis say, has to be perfectly red, including its hoofs, I think. But they can't have any... Non-red hair. Non-red hair. So if they have any white hairs or black hairs. If they have two white, white hairs or two black hairs that are close together, that's enough, that's enough to dis, disqualify uh, that disqualify heifer. Disqualify it, right. <laughs> so they have to inspect very closely for any non-red hairs. This is important, <laughs> very important to God, I guess. Well, you know, the priests probably had a lot of experience because when they're looking for somebody who's leprous. Right. They they're looking, looking for little hairs. white hairs. That's right. <laughs> so they're That's good right. at this now. Anyway, these five red heifers have been shipped to Israel. They're in Jerusalem so now. So today, like today, what? right now, and they are if they, for some reason they have to wait until it's three years old. I don't know why that is. Oh, until the heifer so is three years old. Yeah, but if they get to the to the point where they're three years old and none of them have grown any white or black hairs, mm -hmm. and they also have to be virgins, so they can't be around. And we want to have virgin heifers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to watch out for that. But if they can make it through that period of time and still qualify, then the plan is to sacrifice the red heifer, be able to get all of this water of purification so the priests can be pure and they can do sacrifices again in the temple, which will be rebuilt. Oh. And Christians throughout the world, very um, the enthusiastic uh, evangelical Christians are excited about this because the Jews have returned to the homeland. When the temple is rebuilt, then Jesus will return, and the end of the world will come. So the Christians and the Jews are are together in they are, on this. They're united on this one. Yeah. Oh. Except the problem is the temple for it to be rebuilt is has to be rebuilt on the one of the most sacred pieces of land for uh, Muslims. Oh. So there'll be a lot of... Uh, a big fight. Uh -huh. A war. So all of this is probably never going to happen because I don't think anybody really wants it to except for these crazy extremists. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's going on right now with the red heifers and it's all because of chapter 19 in the book of Numbers. Ha! Huh. That is really quite fascinating. Yeah. I have a video that shows you about the red heifers mm -hmm. and what's going on with those and in, in the notes. And that video was just recently produced. Yes, like, just, I think it was last fall. Uh huh. But it's, that they found the cows. Yeah. And sent them over to Israel. But next spring, in the spring of twenty-four. Yeah. They're saying they're going to be sacrificing this, the red heifer, mm -hmm. if they can find one, and then their their plan is to rebuild the temple, and, and it'll <laughs> be the end of the world. That'd be great. <laughs> and so they have. They're going to choose one of five. Uh -huh. They have five possibles. They just need one. Yeah. Uh huh. But I think this red heifer thing, when you read the chapter here in 19, it seems like you wouldn't pay any attention to it at all. It's just no. another animal sacrifice, another silly thing. That's what I was saying. This doesn't seem numbers, abnormal. Right? Yep. just going to ignore it. But I think the red heifer provided the excuse for not having to follow all of these crazy animal sacrifice laws. This is why we can't do it, because we don't have that red heifer. Uh-huh. And so we can't do it. We don't have it. the tabernacle. Yeah. We don't have See, like any, just find a red cow. Yes. Just, just find a brownish red cow, kill it, get its ashes, and rebuild the temple, start sacrificing animals again, and everybody's happy. <laughs> but no, it has to be this very, very special red red cow that, that Maimonides would approve of and everything. Yeah. That is bizarre. Anyway, that's that's the story of the red heifer that I wanted to tell you about. That's a nice bedtime story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I did learn a lot. <laughs> hey, thanks. Uh-huh. And um, thanks to our listeners. And we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.